The gospel text of today is taken from the gospel of Mark chapter 9 verses 30 to 37 and contains the second passion and resurrection prediction in the gospel. The passion and resurrection prediction is a statement that Jesus makes about what is going to happen to him, about the fact that he is going to suffer, that he is going to be crucified, that he is going to be dead and that he will be laid in a tomb and also that he will rise again. As a matter of fact, the reason why it is called the passion and resurrection prediction is because Jesus never predicts his passion and death without in the same breath also predicting his resurrection. Jesus has told this to his disciples. The disciples refuse to understand. The disciples will not understand. The disciples have heard with their ears but prefer not to understand with their minds because this prediction has to do with going through the ordeal of the cross and the disciples do not want the cross. They think that by their discussion of, of what they are doing, they will evade the cross, they will avoid the cross and so they keep on discussing among themselves even as Jesus talks about his way of life. And then they enter the home destination to which they were going and as Jesus sits down he asks them what they were discussing. They know that what they were discussing is not the right kind of discussion they ought to have had and that is why they cannot respond to Jesus. They cannot answer the question which he asks. And Jesus away that they were discussing about leadership and who would be greatest and who would be first gives them a lesson in true leadership, a lesson in the kind of leader that is expected of anyone who follows Jesus. And what does he do? While he speaks to them in words, he shows them through the action by bringing a child in front of them and placing that child in front of them, what leadership and what being first in the community of God means. What is the symbol of bringing the child? Why children, even at the time of Jesus, did stand for innocence, why children did stand for spontaneity, most importantly, a child stood for dependence and a non-entity. At the time of Jesus, not only were children not to be heard, but children were not even to be seen. To bring a child in front of a rabbi would be an insult to everyone around, including to the rabbi. And so children were almost never seen around holy men and women, and children were never seen around when they were not required. So not only were they not heard, they were not even seen. And yet, Jesus turns the tables when he brings the child, bringing the child primarily as a non-person, as a non-entity and then as someone dependent totally and completely on the parents. So bringing the child would have shocked his disciples beyond words. How can this child be any kind of example? And Jesus brings the child and places the child in front of them and invites them to become like the children. In other words, to become non-entities, something which he had said earlier on, namely to deny themselves. So to be a non-entity means to deny themselves. Then they could be true disciples. Because in the kingdom of God, it is those who are non-entities who have first Place. In the second reading of today, James talks to members of the church, James talks to people about ambition, 
about pride, about greed. And he says, these have no place in any community or in any fellowship in which Jesus is the center. As long as a person is striving for ambitiously for a position, that can be done outside in the world. However, within the church or within the community of Jesus, what is required is to be a non-entity and to acknowledge dependence totally on God. It is not easy for adults to acknowledge dependence. Each one of us thinks that we are independent and we like to be independent. But this pandemic has shown us not only that we are dependent, but it has shown us finally that we are interdependent. And so the lesson of today which Jesus gives by bringing the child is a lesson that is so, so relevant even in these times. We must realize that for our every breath, we are dependent on God and we are interdependent on one another as brothers and sisters. And so we ask God for this grace to realize that in front of God, we are no one, we are nothing and that we will acknowledge totally our dependence on God. How will you show? That you are interdependent? How will you show through one action that you are dependent 